So deep learning is again a specialized subfield of machine learning that uses artificial neural networks. That way, that's where ANNs come into the picture, inspired by the structure of human brain uh, to learn from large amounts of data, right? So our brain, as you know, has neurons that send signals to each other, and that's how our brain basically works. And similarly, a neural network has artificial neurons, just like, you know, with tiny math functions connected together. And that's how you see there's an input layer, there's a hidden layer, and there's an output layer. So imagine you want a neural network to uh, predict or decide if, uh, if the fruit is um, an apple or not, right? The input can be different features like color, shape, weight, how it looks, and all those things. The neural network will take these values, do some calculations, and decide whether the fruit is apple or not, right? And then comes the RNNs, um, the recurrent neural networks, what we call. So ANNs were really good, but ANNs, that artificial um, neural networks, um, cannot remember previous words. They look at the input like a snapshot, not a story. So there is a loss of context, right? So ANNs, artificial neural networks, don't remember anything, right? They cannot track how words relate to each other over time. And that's the biggest limitation of ANNs. So to solve this, we needed a network that reads text one element at a time, remembers what it has seen before, and also uses that memory to interpret the next word or predict the next word. And that's exactly what recurrent neural networks do. And that's when we saw the evolution of recurrent neural networks. Uh, so... ANNs are like looking at each word in isolation. Uh, they don't remember what uh, came before, but language is a story and uh, stories need memory uh, for a proper context. So to handle sequences like text and speech, RNNs came into the picture and that's how the evolution happened slowly from ANNs to RNNs, right? So RNNs helped, but they had these limitations again, right? Uh, RNNs remember previous words, but only for a short time. ANNs did not remember anything. They took everything as a snapshot, but RNNs remembered a bit, but... Um, they remembered only the previous words, but not for a short time and, and, and for, for a short time, right? So when sentences became long, RNNs start to forget the earlier parts. So that was the biggest limitation, again, with the recurrent neural networks. They also process text one word at a time, which makes screening very slow, right? So all these previous models um, did not have the, what we call, attention mechanism, right? They just had this feed-forward mechanism, just predict the next word, which becomes the biggest limitation and... Uh, you know, feed forward um, is where you just predict the next word looking at the previous word. Uh, but where is the remembrance part? Where is the memory part? So there's again a missing context. Then okay, attention mechanism is uh, what allows a model to focus on the most relevant words, uh, no matter where they appear in the sentence uh, or the sequence. So that is where the evolution of transformer architecture basically happened. So now let's talk about uh, transformer architecture.